Hi, my name is Gonzalo Alvarez, and I'm an illustrator, character designer, and game designer. And today I'm going to be talking to you about how video game art styles affect players. Things I'm going to be covering are my literature review, my method for my survey, and my results. So, more specifically, what I'm going to be talking about today is what are the differences between a pixel and hand-drawn image? And then when it's abstract and minimalistically, stylistically, or realistically. Does the different images have an effect on the player depending on which one it is? Well, the first thing I want to cover is what is a video game? We all kind of know what a video game is, but more specifically, the video game medium consists of a human player and a visual feedback device, just like any artist consists of a person viewing a canvas. The only difference is here that we have an input device. With the video game medium, you're allowed to have an input device to interact with the art product. So now that we know what a video game is, what exactly is an indie game? So an indie game is a game made with a small team and a small budget. And their focus is not on commercial success games, but more of a unique or niche experience through the interactive elements of the video game medium. Here are some examples of indie games. This one's painterly, like a Cezanne painting. This mimics a 1930s style Mickey Mouse cartoon. Now, what is a AAA video game? So, the AAA video game is the game everyone knows about. It's the games made by big teams with huge budgets and a focus on profit. And like I said, they focus on a commercial product and on popular ideas such as shooting games, racing games, sports games. Um, and they have a huge budget for photorealistic graphics. Here is an example of Call of Duty, another example. As you can see, both of these games have similar art style, and there's not really much abstraction to either one. So it's really hard to tell why you would want to play one versus the other. They essentially kind of become cliche. Now, to kind of cover a bit more of the differences between an indie game team and a AAA team, here on the indie game team, you have a composer, a designer, a sound designer, and a programmer. Each one of these guys have a substantial <coughs> part of this art product. They each have their own goals to come up with in the end. Versus here, you have over 100 people. You have a lamppost designer, an eyeball artist, a foot programmer, a shirt physics animator, a rock artist. So each one of these people are involved in make, making one specific thing really well rendered, but in the end, they cannot have a unique art style because it's hard to kind of bring it all together in the end. So, indie game art styles primarily consist of pixel art and hand-drawn art. Uh, they're mostly stylized cartoon-like, and like I said earlier, they have a thematic art style, so they follow a color palette, a theme to art, the entire game to have an end product that's cohesive. Here are some examples of some of, this is a AAA game art style. The AAA game art style, however, uses computer-generated 3D graphics because of their huge budget that they have available. Uh, they focus on realistic or mature video games, and they're more of a simulation. So these never really get abstracted. They're more of a sandbox style where you experience something, but like I said earlier, because of the art style, there's not much to do differently. So with the pixel art style, pixel art style is less time-consuming to make less costly, and it's easier to create than any other art style because it's kind of like Legos. You're building images out of small colored blocks. Um, and because the pixel art style was born in the 1970s, obviously it doesn't cost anyone to create it because you can use pretty much any machine. It does take a skilled artist, however, to create a well-rendered picture. Pixel art can be related to mosaic or point of mosaic from fine art. Uh, both of these mediums use small geometric shapes to create a bigger picture. <coughs> now, the pixel art style has evolved a lot since we started. In 1986, The Legend of Zelda, one of the pioneers of pixel art, created this game. Through the small pixels, you were able to create objects and characters, and people were able to tell what these characters were without having too much information. Now in 2016, we have highly rendered pixel art, better animations, better, better colors, and better technology to create more immersive experiences. 
Hand-drawn art style, like I said earlier, was the second most used art style in indie games. But hand-drawn art style is more time consuming to create because you need a skilled artist to be able to create high quality work. It's more costly because of the software and tools necessary to create high quality artwork. And it's more difficult to create because of all these other things that I've mentioned. But in the end, they can be more unique than the limitations of clustering pixels, like pixel art. Here's some examples of hand-drawn art used in video games. Now, all of my studies are based off Graves Roman, who was a master student at the University of Copenhagen, Denmark, who created the indie game Master Thesis. In his thesis, he studied 45 indie games. In these 45 indie games, he tried to look at which art styles were mainly used. 19% of those games were hand-drawn, 30% of those games were pixel, and 50% of those games were everything else, like claymation or stop motion. So majority of the art style was the pixel art style. In that same study, he did the art style level of abstraction of those games. Those games turned out to have 51% of them being stylistically hand-drawn or stylistically pixelated, 9% of them were abstract, and 39% of them were realistic. Majority of those games were stylized or cartoon-like. Here are some examples of what I mean. Abstract is using a singular shape to show one object. Stylistic is more cartoon-like. And realistic is you can almost believe it's a real person. For my purposes of my research, however, I decided to replace abstract with minimalistic since there's a bigger pool of games out available to use. This is a panel out of Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics. In this panel, he says, thus, when you look at a photo of a realistic drawing of a face, you see it as the face of another. But when you enter the world of the cartoon, you see yourself. What he means by this is when you see a realistic image of someone, you believe it to be someone else, someone who has their own beliefs, their own personality. However, with a cartoon, you're more easily able to project your own emotions, your own beliefs through these characters. They essentially become a vessel into the world. So how does this concept affect players experiencing with a video game? Well, that's what I wanted to find out. So my hypothesis was to check would a more or less realistic art style make a difference on player sympathy towards those characters? Would the hand-drawn or pixel art style of the same image make a difference? Or do different demographics of race, location, education affect the results? So in my survey, I decided to create a survey through SurveyMonkey. I asked questions such as their demographic education. I created six different images for them to choose from. And then I asked them, which art style do you sympathize with the most and the least? The sample game that I chose to use for my survey was a game called Papers, Please. Papers, Please uses a pixelated stylistic art style. In Papers, Please, you play as a border patrol agent, and your job is to deny, to deny or approve citizens into a fictional country. This game tests players' morals and ethics in the various situations available. Here are the six images that I created for my survey's purposes. I have three images that are pixelated, minimalistic, stylistic, and realistic. Then I have three hand-drawn that are minimalistic, stylistic, and realistic. And I showed these images to my surveys, and I gave them this prompt. You have approved a citizen entry to Arstaska, who presented all the proper documentation. He lets you know that his wife is next in line, and to please not give her too much trouble. You call for the next person in line. The woman you see is Roma Martin wife of the man you just approved, and she is 33 years old. You ask her to present her passport and permit. The information on her passport is correct, but she is missing her permit. You ask her about it, and she responds, please, I beg you, they would not give me permit. I have no choice. I will be killed if I return to Antigua. You must now decide to approve or deny this woman. If you deny her, she will be sent back to her country and will surely be killed. If you approve her, however, she will gain entry and be with her husband but you will receive less pay for food, medicine, and heat for your family that you must keep up with. These are the results of my survey. I ended up having 967 responses to my survey, all thanks to Lucas Pope, the creator of the game, tweeting my survey and helping me get all these people. However, only 752 completed the 
survey, which means they left out a question or two. So that's gonna be my sample size. Here are the results. When asked, have you ever seen or played the game Papers, Please, prior to the survey, 93% said yes. This is possibly because Lucas Pope was the one who gathered most of my responses. Now, when asked which overall art style do you prefer, pixel or hand-drawn, 70% chose pixelated. Now, when asked which one you would sympathize with the most, they chose the realistic art style, art style number three and art style number six, both the pixelated and the hand-drawn, with pixelated being in front of hand-drawn by 4%. Here, which art style helps you sympathize with the woman situation the least? They chose the minimalistic art style, the pixel and the hand-drawn art style. Again, pixelated being a little bit ahead of hand-drawn. Now, I didn't get enough respondents to figure out if demographics, race, education had anything to do with the way they responded. But something that I did notice, however, was that both of those people or questions were answered with the pixelation being the highest one. Why is this? Well, that's because pixel art, much like a Cezanne painting, allows creative stimulation that invites players to fill in the details, thus creating a more immersive experience. So the ambiguity of pixelation, much like I said a Cezanne painting, allows users or players or viewers to input their own imaginations to create what's left out. So what this means is that games that focus on characters, for example, the game I presented earlier, rather than the message, benefit from a more realistic art style. Now games that focus on the message rather than the character benefit from a more minimalistic art style. Now for my future studies, something that I would like to do is see if there are geographic differences in the preferred art style, possibly have more art styles available, especially in 3D art, and then try a different genre of game and see how those results vary. I would like to acknowledge my mentor, Christopher Troutman, for helping me out throughout every little thing through the McNair program, the McNair staff for being there and answering all my questions, Lucas Pope for helping me get as many respondents as I did, Stuart Flint or Ken Reaper, um, a YouTuber who liked my work enough to create a YouTube video about it, and obviously my fiance, Greg Chadwick, who was there for me through the entire process. Thank you, and are there any questions? How do you, uh, what is the uh, difference, I guess, uh, between your approach to actually making these different art styles, like hand-drawn versus pixelation? Well, for something that I want to mention is that both of these images, or the pixelated and the hand-drawn images, were all done through Photoshop. Uh, the pixelated ones, I used a certain brush tool, and then the hand-drawn ones, I used a certain brush tool to create digitally. So it's hand-drawn, but it was on the computer? Yes, it was hand-drawn on the computer, so what that means is I used a stylus and then my tablet, and then I'm able to basically mimic a traditional art style through this physical device. So it's just like a hand-drawn physically on paper, but it's done digitally. And technology allows you to be able to you know, quickly manipulate the lines that you use and quickly be able to mess with the work without having to erase it, much like in traditional mediums. If I was to paint these objects, it would probably take a lot longer to do modifications. So, like, personally, what, like, which one do you enjoy and which one do you relate to most? Um, well, I think, like most of the respondents, I think that pixel art style has had its bad rap. Uh, I think it really is a unique art style that was born out of the video game medium. And because, like I said earlier, of the technolo technological advances that we've had since then, we're able to create better pixel art that's more, um, I guess, it has more colors, more animations, and it's just, it's more becoming a cartoon. It's the cartoon of the digital video game medium. Yes, sir. I'm a thousand first time completion of what this cognitive dissonance. What regrets do you have? What would you have done differently? Well, something that I would have done differently was possibly maybe had more art styles available for them to choose from. I feel like maybe having only one or the other may be a little limited to really get substantial uh, feedback, but I would have had different art styles um, rendered in, I guess, more styles um, 
um, and maybe use some traditional mediums and stuff like that. Thank you. <laughs>